Hey everybody, yeah, I can't believe it. It's another Sunday already. And this week I'd like to talk to you about mindfulness and energy consumption in the home. Don't worry, I'm not gonna tell you to turn all your lights off, but I do want to talk to you about the energy that you use and being mindful of that energy while you're using it. When you sign up for electricity these days in, in many parts of the world, you get the option to sign up for renewable energy or some percentage of renewable energy as part of your bill. And when you do that, you're essentially ensuring that for every kilowatt hour of electricity that you consume, somewhere in the network, another kilowatt hour of electricity is being produced using renewable energy generation methods. So it could be solar, it could be wind, it could be wave, it could be geothermal. And so you could very easily assume from that that your net carbon footprint is zero because every kilowatt hour that you are consuming, somewhere in the system, a kilowatt hour of green energy is being generated. And that can make us quite complacent about our energy consumption. And, and I've heard people do it, and I know I have in the past, go, well, it doesn't matter because I'm 100% renewable energy. And so therefore, it doesn't matter how much electricity I use because it's 100% renewable. If you were generating all of that power at home and that power was going into a battery bank in your garage, whether it was a Tesla power wall or, or something else, and you weren't connected to the electrical grid, then maybe I could understand that attitude towards excess. But when you're consuming electricity from the grid, every kilowatt hour that you consume is a kilowatt hour that somebody else can't. And that forces the grid to generate more electricity. I hope that logic works. And so even if you're buying 100% renewable electricity, I think it's a better solution to actually examine your electricity consumption. And it can be simple things, you know, like making sure that you turn off your TV and, and turn it off standby rather than keep it on standby turning off lights when you leave a room, ensuring that when you are using the washing machine, you use a lower temperature, at least in Europe. And I'm going to kind of go off on a little tangent here and explain this because I realized when I moved to the United States, washing machines operate differently in different parts of the world. In the UK, in Europe, it's common to have heating elements inside the washing machine that heat up the water as you're washing your clothes. They take longer to wash as a consequence and obviously, if you've set your temperature to 90 degrees, the washing machine heats up the water to 90 degrees Celsius and then uses it to wash the clothes. So by switching to 30, you're actually consuming a lot less uh, electricity to wash your clothes. Over in the US, it's slightly different because you are pulling hot water from your hot water system to wash your clothes. But it's the same kind of idea. Don't use excess energy unless you really need to. Be more mindful about your electricity consumption and your energy consumption when you're doing the things that you're doing in your daily lives. It could also be something like, for example, if you, if you live in a house with central heating, as I'm sure most of you do, instead of turning the thermostat up to 22 degrees, 72 degrees, whatever you decide your temperature is in Fahrenheit or Celsius or whatever, Instead of setting it to a, a level where it's comfortable if you're just wandering around in a t-shirt, set your thermostat so it's comfortable when you're wandering around in a jumper or a hoodie. And when you feel cold, don't reach for the thermostat. Put on a jumper if you haven't already got one on. Or buy a pair of slippers. Personally, I find if I've got hot feet, and it sounds bizarre, but if my feet are warm, the rest of me is generally pretty warm. And you can do little hacks like that. And while they may not have a massive impact on your electricity bill, or they might not have a massive impact, you might think, on the local grid, if everybody did that, we would dramatically lower our energy consumption just by being a little bit more mindful about our consumption, about our energy use. And that can be used as well when we're talking about plug-in cars. Instead of charging your car up to full every night, which is not great for the battery and 
if you're char every time you charge the car, there are, there are going to be losses in the system. Don't charge it, leave it plugged in all the time. Why not charge it every other day if that's something that you can get away with doing? Turn off computers. Don't use things. Don't leave things in standby mode unless you absolutely have to. So I want you to tell me in the comments below what you're doing on a daily basis to be more mindful about the electricity that you are consuming. I don't want to take people's gadgets away. I don't want people to feel that they can't use technology or use energy. But I think we should be having this frank discussion about how we can use less energy as a society in order to make things better for our future and for our children down the road. Because even if you don't believe in climate change, if you, if you say that that's not a scientifically proven thing and you're saying it's a myth or it's, it's fake or it's a religion or whatever you want to call it, surely using less energy is a good thing, right? I mean, if, you've, if, you're, uh, if you have a bank account and you have $10,000 in your bank account, surely it's better to spend $8,000 and still have $2,000 left than it is to spend $9,999 because then when you need the money or you need the thing elsewhere, you haven't got any money left. And, and I feel that if we keep consuming energy, keep consuming resources at the rate that we're consuming them, we may not have anything left, regardless of what climate change may or may not be. What do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I will be back next week as usual. Things get a little screwy because I'm out of the office quite a bit and you're going to be seeing some pre-recorded videos that aren't the usual Transport Evolved Fair, but I hope that you enjoy them. And as always, keep evolving. Mm -hmm.